Okay, so in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at importing 123DX files, that's 123D design files, into Fusion 360. We're also going to take a look at some of the Adafruit 3D parts that we've uploaded to GitHub. So if you're looking to utilize some of the parts that we've made in our project, you totally can. We've uploaded them all to our GitHub repo. So you can actually use the uh, GitHub desktop app so that you can get new parts when we make them or even updates to older parts. Or you can just uh, hit the download zip button over here and that'll download all the files directly to your desktop. So I got it here open and all the files are in folders, category folders, and then the um, the files have the part number. So if you go to adafruit.com slash products slash 998, you'll get this product over here. So that's one easy way to get to stuff. So um, we're going to have to do a little bit of hacking to uh, to import it. So you can't actually export a sat without paying for that feature. It's a it's sort of a uh, a power one two three D feature. So here's how to do it. Right? We'll take the file that we want. We want to use the Raspberry Pi A plus. And what we'll do is we'll just rename the file. So I hit enter on my keyboard and I can change all we need to change is the extension. So it's one two three D X and we'll change it to dot zip and hit enter. It's gonna ask us, hey do you want are you sure you want to change zip? Yes I do. So hit use dot zip. Next thing, um, you need to double click it to open it, and you'll notice that it's now a folder. And if you open the folder, there's a bunch of different things in it. We have this thing called Fusion, a folder. We have manifest.dat, we have previews. Here's the like the, the PNG previews that it stores. So this is pretty much how a 123D file is um, uh, the inner workings of it, right? So we wanna what we want to do is grab this part here. Um, it's called Bree. P 0smt and that's really the parts. Uh, that's the actual solids that we want, and it's only 120k. So what we'll do is we'll rename this to uh, pi a plus, or just pi a plus dot, and then we want to capitalize sat. That's the extension that we want. Dot sat. We'll hit enter. Then again, it'll say, "Hey, are you sure?" You hit yes. Use dot sat. And if you look at it, it is now a dot sat. Um, it says open with Fusion 360. And it's got our little sat um, thing. So instead of doing that, Open360, it won't let you do that. If you click on Open360, it will prompt you that you can't open files locally. So let's try that anyway. So Open360, it'll open it up now. And I'll take this time to, to talk about why we are switching over to Fusion360. A lot of our projects are starting to get really, really large. A lot of different parts inside of them, um, like the Pocket Pie Girl or the Libretto. There's a lot of parts in there. And uh, using a Fusion One Two Three D or Fusion One, using Fusion Three Sixty um, really lets you leverage a bunch of cool uh, features that will let uh, that will make our jobs a lot easier. So okay, you, you probably missed that, but there was a little error that says uh, "open lo open locally files not supported." So here's how to here's how to get it in there. So there's an upload button over here in the side panel. If you're new to this, you'll make a new project, and I called mine uh, Noah's first project because it's my first project. And what we'll do is we'll hit the upload button over here, and it gives you an option. You can either select files or drop the files here. I highly recommend that you drag and drop your file here. If you try navigating and using the select file browser, your system will crash. Just letting you know. So what I'll do is I'll come over here and grab the .sat file that we made, and you see how it disappeared. That's a little UI bug, but there it goes. It's it's showing now. And uh, wait till your um, to, I guess it's not going to show up. So let's just try dropping it there. OK, it gives me the name, the file type, the size, and I can remove it here. I could also change the destination, but I want it to go there, so let's hit Upload, and it'll start uploading. It'll probably take a minute or so, but uh, in the meantime, we can take a look at uh, uh, how to sort of navigate and orbit around the canvas. So I'll click this button here, and then you can always access it there. It's already halfway done, OK. So one thing you'll notice that when you orbit inside of 123D, you can do that very easily with the right click tool. In, 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 one, in Fusion 360, if you try that, you get this sort of cool menu. And we'll look at that in another episode. But right now, I just want to show you guys how to, how to move around stuff. So really, it all, it all comes down to the middle mouse button, the one with the wheel. See, when I scroll, it's just like 123D, so I can scroll to zoom in and out. Um, if I wanted to pan, all I'd have to do is click the middle mouse button inward and then hold it down and then sort of move the mouse around to, to pan. So that's how you pan. If you want to rotate, same thing, but you hold down shift. So hold down shift 
and then uh, click the middle mouse button and then you can orbit around so there you go you actually don't have the option to change um, that so uh, get used to it <laughs> unless unless one two three unless Autodesk is listening uh, yeah we, it'd be nice to be able to change that okay so while we were talking about that now I see that the the Raspberry Pi A plus model is now been uploaded now if I double click on it it'll import it automatically into this untitled new document thing that automatically showed up so first thing what happened here it's not in the right orientation if you open this in 123d design you'll notice that it's actually on the it's flat on the grid and it's not like that here so what we want to do is we want to make it come in this area here we want to position it in that area so in order to do that here's what we'll do all the pieces are separated and I'll hit the, the fit button here so that we can see and orbit around it properly okay so we're orbiting around it and if you open over here come over here to the la the browser this is the coolest thing right so you have a bunch of layers here I click bodies and bodies are basically solids these are all the little objects that make up things so I can come in here and actually rename them it's like USB port or something and that's really cool very helpful especially for parts uh, projects that have a ton of parts so uh, what I'll start off with, I actually don't want that part, so I can come in here and just delete it. But I want everything else, so what I'll do is I actually need another object so that I can snap it in there. But you know what, let's not do that first. So let's go ahead and uh, hit Shift Select, hit all those, so now I have that. And what I can do is I'll come up here, you see this in tool tool panel. This is a lot like the tool panel in 123D Design. Um, for, it's it's in a mode there's different workspace modes and I'm in sculpt right now so just to change that I just hover it and click on model and now uh, over modify and create you'll see all the sort of different or the same things that you would see in 123d but just more of them so under modify we have move we have pull and if you click on this little button here it'll let you add it to the toolbox which I've already done I have move pull I have combine split solid and a bunch of other things that I use most frequently so I can just come up here and click on them so I'll do that. I'll click on move, and right off the bat, you'll see that uh, our our manipulator is like at the corner, and that's not where we want. We want it in the middle. So in order to do that, um, you get this little uh, move panel, and you have a bunch of different options here. You can adjust um, the distances, the x, y, and z distance, or even the angle, all through this panel. You don't have to mess around with this manipulator if you don't want to, which is really cool. I find a lot of a lot of times it'd be really useful if I could just punch in the distance that I want. So anyway, I'm going to click on Set Pivot, and I click on that, and now I can roll, uh, use the, the mouse to uh, scroll over different things, and whenever I roll over an object, uh, Fusion will do its best to figure out what are the center points in every little angle. So in the center of the center, or the center of the right, or the top, and it does this for, for individual objects. You can see how uh, there's a visual indicator for every object when I roll over it, like, hey, what, what middle do you want? So in this case, we want the, the, BC, the PCB, so I'll click on that. And once I click on that, I need to hit OK. Set pivot is done. And now it is now when I uh, mess with it, it'll move the whole thing and keep my uh, manipulator in the center there. So now I can come in here and I can rotate it. So I'm going to rotate it flat like that. You can see the, the panel here, uh, the Z angle is what I changed. And then I can, uh, just like I would in 123D Design, um, sort of uh, move stuff like that. I want it right here. This is the bottom. Like that. And there's my, now it's sort of in the middle. I'll go ahead and move it like this and like that. Now we're in the center of the grid. And once you're done, all you have to do is hit OK. And there's your stuff. Okay, I think that's going to be it for this tutorial, folks. Uh, just a cool way, really an easy way, not really, whatever. Just a nice way to um, export uh, your 1, 2, 3DX files, get them into Fusion 360, and how to sort of move them around a little bit. Um, we'll be doing a lot of more tutorials on Fusion 360. Um, this is just the first of many uh, series that we'll be doing on sort of transitioning over. So if you're looking uh, for a, uh, a piece of modeling app, uh, a modeling app that um, has a bunch of good features, parametric, all sorts of other things. Definitely check out Fusion 360. All right, folks. Also, uh, please be sure to check out our GitHub repo so you can get all the parts and 
you might even want to consider getting the GitHub desktop app so that you can get new parts when we make them. All right, folks, this is going to be it. If you guys have any questions, please do so. Leave them in the comments below, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, everybody.